Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we have a new product for you. Well, new to me at least. It is these Aruba Instant On access points. Now, personally, I have never had a lot of experience with Aruba. I've never set up customers on Aruba or anything like that, so when they offered to send me these access points to check out, of course, I always like giving every vendor a fair shake. And what I've found with these Instant On access points is that they are not as full-featured as some of the other solutions out there. You don't get a million different options that you have to configure, but you do get the options that are good enough for probably 90 plus percent of customers out there. And I really actually enjoyed the simplicity of these devices in terms of not only ease of setup, but also the interface itself. And while again, you don't have a million different options that you can use to configure these things, you certainly have everything that most customers and most businesses would need to pop up some access points and start working with them uh, very easily. So I enjoy that a lot. And you guys will hopefully see that as part of the setup when I get to the actual interface of these Aruba Instant On devices. So I have two of them here. Now, Aruba has a full set of these access points, these instant on access points. You can check them out. I think it's arubainstanton.com. I'll put a link down below uh, just so that uh, in case I got that wrong. But none of these access points have license or subscription fees. So again, holding to my policy of only reviewing equipment without annual license fees because you know, no one wants to pay every month just for the privilege to keep using their devices, right? So these don't have subscription fees. They don't have license fees. They do have a relatively full lineup of products for the indoor access points. They have a two by two MIMO access point. They have this one, which is the AP12. This is a three by three. All of these are 802.11 AC Wave 2. Then we have this one here. This is the AP15. I'll unbox this one in a second. This one is a 4x4 access point. Then they have a single 2x2 outdoor access point, and they also have a 2x2 sort of desktop slash wall form factor access point as well. So you have basically five different choices of access points. Again, I appreciate that they're keeping it simple, you know, you don't need a thousand different types of access points. These are the ones that'll mostly cover everything that you want. The only one that I would like to see is perhaps a higher capacity outdoor access point. So they have a two by two outdoor. If they also had a four by four outdoor to cover areas outside where there might be a lot of people congregating, that might be a good option as well. So the units that I have here, this is the three by three. This is the AP12. This one is $133.49 on Amazon. Again, 802.11 AC wave two, omnidirectional antenna, 1600 megabits max data rate, and then maximum recommended uh, 75 clients, or 75 clients is the maximum recommended to connect to the uh, AP12. The AP15, is basically the same. It's 159.94, but it's a four x four instead of a three x three. Uh, total throughput of approximately 2,033 megabits per second, and then maximum suggested clients of 100 uh, per access point. All right, so let's get this one unboxed so we can actually see what comes inside. All right, popping this open. We have some literature, looks like a quick start guide. Now these were very, very easy to set up. You can set it up uh, through the, there's a web GUI, there's also an app on your phone. I'm gonna use the app on the phone, or I should say I use the app on the phone for this one here. I might do the web GUI for this one since it's easier to record for video purposes. Uh, startup guide, uh, safety compliance warranty information. Here you can see the size difference. So the AP15 is just a little bit bigger than the AP12. Uh, both devices have this really nice metal backing. I don't know if that's aluminum or what. Um, this one did get a little bit hot, so I measured the back uh, on the metal at about 114 degrees Fahrenheit when it was just sitting idle for a long time. So it definitely feels a little warm to the touch, but nothing too severe. On the access point itself, we have uh, our Ethernet, now this is interesting. So look on the AP12, they've got this sort of cutout section here and the Ethernet plugs in there with this little bit of cable management that they have. On this device, however, looks like the Ethernet is up here 
uh, sticking out of the back. So that's kind of interesting. I guess once it's wall mounted, you do have enough space to plug in there, but it's interesting that this one has a cutout and this one does not. I'm assuming, I guess, they had to cram more stuff into the AP15. Uh, both of these do have a 12 volt, 1.5 amp power option as well. We've got a Kensington lock, and then we also have a USB port. So USB port on top, and then they both also have this port here, which says console. So this has console port over here, and it's doesn't, it's not labeled on the AP15, but I think it's the same exact connector. And then that's about it. I'm assuming that this little hole over here and this hole right here is sort of the factory reset hole. But um, yeah, there's two lights here. We have a wireless light and a warning light. Same thing on the AP12. Two lights, but this on the AP12, they're up here on the side instead. Inside the box, we have some mounting options. So both of these devices are wall mount as well as ceiling mount. So this one is the T-bar ceiling mount. And this just sort of clicks on like so. Uh, you know, clicks on uh, if you screw it in uh, clockwise. And then we have uh, the T-bar mount this way or the T-bar mount this way, depending on what size of drop ceiling T-bar mount you're using. Uh, nice flat uh, ethernet cable. And then this one must be the wall mount. Yeah, this is the wall mount. So it does stick off of the wall quite a bit, as you can see, which would give you plenty of space to get in here and uh, plug in that ethernet connection. And having it off the wall too, look at look how far that sticks off the wall. Uh, so it is a little bit, um, I guess it sticks off the wall a little much, or I should say a little bit more than you would typically be used to with these access points. But also giving it about an extra two inches of clearance here, I imagine helps the antenna as well as helps the heat dissipation. Like if you're right up against the wall like this, uh, you know, it's gonna get a lot warmer than having this sort of current of air being able to circulate behind the device. Looking at the AP12's ceiling wall mount, this one's actually quite a bit smaller, uh, but it does still sort of stand off the wall a little bit. Like I said, you're gonna have about maybe uh, three quarters of an inch of clearance off of the wall with the AP12, but you have a significant amount of clearance off the wall with the AP15. I'm gonna plug this in and see if maybe this one just gets warmer than the AP12. Maybe that's why they have some extra space back here, or maybe it's just for the cable management since they don't have the same cutout that they do on the AP12. Interesting design though. All right, so we'll use this nice flat ribbon cable that they gave us in the box, and let's fire this sucker up. All right, there we can see the light on the bottom. That means that this thing is ready to rock and roll. It's ready to be adopted and configured with either the web portal online or with the Aruba Instant on app. I've got both of these Aruba devices plugged in. Uh, this one is already set up, so it's got a green solid light. It's uh, already working. My computer actually is currently running off of this access point, which it has for about the past two days now. Uh, everything has been rock solid as far as working off of this uh, AP12. The AP15, uh, it's a little tough to see, but the uh, LED is blinking. Uh, it's alternating green and amber, which means that it is ready to be adopted. If we look at the interface of this device itself, and if we navigate to that IP address, these devices do not have an onboard GUI. Okay, see, th these are basically cloud devices only. They connect out to portal.arubainstanton.com, or you can configure them and monitor them and check the status with the Aruba Instant On app. We can see that this one is in status waiting to be onboarded. So let's go over to our Instant On portal. And I like the interface of this portal. It's pretty simple, it's easy to understand. Here are our networks. We'll go through that in a little bit. We can see the clients that are connected, but we wanna pop down here to inventory so that we can add this new access point. We're gonna click on inventory. We can see my current access point, and this is all information about the AP12. We can see that, the, for instance, the 2.4 gigahertz radio has one client connected. That's my computer that I'm working on right now. We can see the firmware version and all of that. If we wanted to set it up with a static IP address, we can do that as well. So let's add a new device. We're gonna click Add Devices. Uh, add a new device, place your instant on device in its destination area, make sure it's powered on and select search my, for my device. So let's go ahead and do that now. Boom, it was found immediately. And we're going to, I guess you don't have to select it, you just click add devices. 
please allow some time. Oh, that was it. So <laughs> that has been added to the network and now we can see that this device is synchronizing. Let's go ahead and change the name to something friendlier, AP15, and we're gonna go ahead and save that change. And now we can see that we have two devices. One is synchronizing and one is active. This uh, synchronizing device should finish up here in just a minute. And let's go ahead, while that's synchronizing, let's close this out and let's go into our network so that we can see what network options are available. Now, in my home LAN, I basically have three primary networks. I have my main LAN, which is where all my computers are. I have a guest network for guests that's typically just an open Wi-Fi network that my guests can use. It is bandwidth throttled so that they can't take up all of my internet access. And then I have an ID IoT, or the network that I use to identify my IoT devices. So I have an IoT network that is separate from everything else. So I have recreated all of those networks here. And let's take a look at the options that we get for each network. So if we look at my Aruba Jamaica network, that is my first one, or my main LAN. We can see that it is active. We gave it a network name. We have a WPA2 Password authentication, you could optionally also do radius-based authentication. If we click on options, we can set our bandwidth. Now, again, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about simplicity. So they don't give you the option to specifically set the amount of megabits per second or kilobits per second or you know gigabits per second that you want to allow or throttle your bandwidth down for your users, but you can set it to unlimited or you can crank it all the way down to one megabit per second. And it says good for emails, VoIP, web surfing, music, and social media. Next level is five megabits per second. Good for online gaming, video conferences, and streaming videos. Keep in mind, this is a per client setting, not a per network setting. 10 megabits per second, 25 megabits per second, or unlimited. So they don't really allow you to just put in whatever you want, but they do give you a range. And for most people, you're gonna be able to find a setting within that range that works. So for instance, my guest network, I set down to 10 megabits per second, and that works just fine. In fact, it caps it almost exactly at 10 megabits when I run speed tests. You can run these access points uh, on a VLAN, so we can certainly add like VLAN 107, like for my IoT network. Uh, or you can run this as a routed network. So you can create the wireless network behind your LAN as a natted, totally separate network. And then it just basically allows you to choose the base IP address and the subnet, and then it looks like it handles all of the DHCP and stuff like that for you. Most people are just gonna run it in the same network because they'll have a separate firewall that's handling all of their networks and VLANs and all of that stuff, much like I do. You have radio options for which actual radios you want to enable. In my case, I'm enabling both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios. And then I had this option, which I thought was kind of interesting. Extend the 2.4 gigahertz range. It's just an on or off setting. And it says allowing far away 2.4 gigahertz clients to connect by enabling lower data rates may slow down the network performance. So basically, if you have some devices that you're having a little bit of trouble getting connected, you can turn that uh, setting on and it will basically lower the data rates of the 2. gigahertz network, which again, slows down the network or slows down the performance for those clients, but it allows for a little bit of extended range for possibly better connectivity. If we click on schedule, you can set a schedule for any of these devices. So which days of the week and which hours uh, of the day are these, is this network active? So if you, for instance, didn't want your guest Wi-Fi network active while your business is after hours, you know, you don't want uh, people sitting outside your tanning salon using your internet from the parking lot, you can turn this off after hours. And then finally, if we click on applications, we can see some small amount of DPI for the clients that are connected, right? So this tells you the amount of traffic transferred on this network, as well as the type of traffic that has been transferred on this network. And we can see we've got streaming, uncategorized. I'm not sure what utilities is, but 15.8 gigs of utilities. I'm not sure exactly what that category means. Regardless, it'll break it down into all of these different categories, including malicious, kids and family, government and politics, adult content, gaming, etc.
Let's click back on our devices. We can see two of two devices are online and now AP15 is active and we can see all of the information about this access point. If we click on clients, we can see which clients are connected. So for instance, this is my computer that I'm recording this uh, desktop from and we can see my IP address. I'm running Windows 10. I'm connected to this wireless network through this access point. I'm, you can see my current speeds and the categories for me as a client, which, you know, which actual categories or DPI did I uh, encounter while I've been surfing around the web. And then if we click on the applications button here, uh, we also get sort of a deeper dive into um, the DPI stuff, right? So we have our applications, uh, if we open up utilities, for instance, ah, here we go. So now we can see if we dig into utilities, websites and applications most visited uh, SMB Windows file server. So I had actually just recently, uh, this must be a backup, right? So this must be my system backing up files to my Synology NAS, which it does on a nightly basis. I have my computer connected to this access point overnight. So that must be what is happening there. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's go back to streaming. Here we can see youtube.com is the highest, or the most streaming I did, mostly because I was watching some YouTube earlier today. And you can dig in into any of this other stuff. And uh, unfortunately, no adult content was served in the past 24 hours. So there's not much to these access points, but again, you do have the functionality that you need. Right, so the functionality of this thing covers and sort of the simplicity of the interface and the simplicity of the, the status information that you receive as well as the configuration settings that you can configure is going to be plenty enough for easily 90 plus percent of, of clients and customers out there that are interested in looking at this equipment. Okay, let's go ahead and run some speed tests. I am not going to do any sort of internal LAN point to point speed tests. I don't really have the testing capacity in order to uh, max these devices out on the LAN anyways. So we're just gonna make sure that we're getting full internet speed for my clients. And I have turned off the AP15. We are only using the AP12 and I am connected to the AP12 on five gigahertz. So let's start with fast.com. And away we go. So fast.com is showing me quite a bit of speed out to Netflix, which is uh, this fast.com is not the best speed test in the world, but it does give you probably the highest speeds that you can, <laughs> that you can achieve. So that says 540 megabit. Let's try speedtest.net. There we go. Speedtest.net shows me 448 down by 17 up. That is about what I would expect. So essentially what that tells me is that on five gigahertz, we are getting absolutely full speed internet uh, from my computer wirelessly through this uh, access point, which is great. And I, I've been using this access point for the past two days or so, and it has been rock solid. I mean, there's just been no problems with it whatsoever. I actually, I love that, I appreciate it. All right, let's try, uh, let's try Ubiquiti's speed test as well. Oh wow, so Ubiquiti's speed test is having some sort of weird issue. I tried this in Chrome and Firefox, but it's just continuously reloading and reloading and reloading. So something must be going on with their test. In fact, let me connect my phone and we'll see if I can run the test from my phone. And there we go. I'll take a screenshot of this, but uh, it came out to 430 or 429.9 down by 19.1 up. So bottom line is I'm getting absolute full speed on the five gigahertz. Now let's try one of the throttled networks, uh, the guest network for instance. Uh, and actually uh, I did set up a captive portal. Let me show you that first. So if I click in networks, I go to my guest network. We have it set up as portal. And then if you click customize guest portal, this is where you can basically create your own captive portal interface. And here we can see what it looks like on mobile. We can see what it looks like on desktop. Uh, we can change the background color, you know, we can set up a logo and all of our text and the terms and conditions and everything like that. All very easy to do. Now this is the site management, by the way. So in this portal, you can have multiple sites. If you have, you know, if you're an MSP and you're servicing multiple customers, they can all be connected to these different sites. Uh, here's where you can do software updates, which is kind of nice because you can allow software updates or you can schedule software updates at a certain date and time. So for instance, I've scheduled software updates only for Sunday morning at 3 a.m. 
Uh, you can uh, tell the device what to do with its status lights if you want them either on or off. And you can set your time zone. Administration allows you to basically set the name of the site and add accounts for whom has access to manage the site. Okay, getting back to the guest portal though, let's go ahead and connect out to the Aruba guest portal. And this should uh, pop this guest portal screen. And of course, in trying this out live, it is not working, right? So the guest portal actually was working on my iPhone. So let me try to connect on my iPhone again here. All right, connecting to Aruba guest. And this time, so you can see in this case, uh, it actually did pop the guest portal on my phone. Why it's not working on my computer, I can't tell you. I'm not going to look into it. Uh, okay, so we are signing into the captive portal. It says success, and now we are connected to Wi-Fi. Let me run another speed test and check out the bandwidth throttling uh, through the guest portal. All right, I will take a screenshot of this as well, but we got exactly 25 megabits by 19 megabits. Let's check out the Aruba portal and double check what we throttled the guest network down to. We click in networks, we look at our guests, and we have it throttled down to 25 megabits. So it's exactly, uh, the throttling works really well, right? It keeps it down. The one thing that, again, there's simplicity to this, right? So it throttles it to 25 synchronous, right? So you got 25 down, 25 up that you're throttling your users to. In my case though, I only have 20 megabits up. So for instance, in Ubiquity world, when I'm doing throttling, I'll usually throttle the upload speed much, um, I'll, it'll throttle more than the download speed. So I'll do something like 10 megabits download by two megabits upload throttled, right? So in this case, there's one area where maybe I would like a little bit more customization, but you can also just throttle it down to, you know, five megabits or 10 megabits. Again, that's gonna be synchronous for your users where they have the possibility of not only having 10 megs down, but also 10 megs upload. Okay, so there we have it. There is a look at the Aruba Instant on access points overall. I was, I guess I would say that I was pleasantly surprised by these access points. You know, I've done a, a number of different brands recently of different access points. And the way, th this one really stuck out to me because of the simplicity. So the interface is really nice. It's really easy to set up. It's really easy to configure. You know, you don't have to have a ton of IT experience to get this thing up and running and off the ground. Uh, and I, I appreciate that, right? So this is a device that's going to be good for easily 90% of businesses out there. When you get to that extra 10% where you have to do more custom things like band steering and the ability to separately throttle or maybe custom throttle the download versus the upload speed and things like that, that's where these start to fall short. But most people don't need to do that, right? So again, I I'm pleasantly surprised by these devices. I think the price point is perfectly fine. It was 160 bucks for this one and 134 bucks for the three by three access point. I mean, that price point is perfectly fine. I like that there's no licensing fees and all of that. So yeah, there you go. Aruba Instant On. What do you guys think about these devices? Do you have experience with them? I'd love to hear about it. Put that down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this, more reviews of different kinds of access points. Uh, let me know that down in the comments below as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.